Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. As we're getting awfully close to 100,000 subscribers, I have a bit of a special. Now, as some of you might know, I did my master's in computer science with a specialization in artificial intelligence. One of my projects during the time was researching malware classification engines and in specific building a ransomware detection system. And today I'll get to show you guys a brief demo of it. This is definitely something that could in the future be a project for TPSC. Unfortunately, at the moment, I will not be able to disclose a lot of details about the actual technical implementation, the algorithms behind it. That's because this is pending publication and I've been advised against disclosing this too much. But hey, in the spirit of all the next-gen AI-based products being tested on TPSC, why not take a look at this one? So as you can see, we've got a bit of a Python script on the desktop. This is essentially the engine that will be running in real time. We've got the intelligence. It's funny because I had to rename a lot of these terms just to keep the actual algorithm names out of it. But as we launch this, our system should now be protected. Keep in mind, this is not a full AV engine. It's just a ransomware detection mechanism, but it's quite cool. I've got a bit of a demo set up here. So we've got some ransomware, some really bad ones. We've got WannaCry, Spora, Ryuk, Loki, and Bad Rabbit. And then we've got some not ransomware files. Now these are not just not ransomware, these are also files that are typically detected by a lot of the next-gen AI-based security products. So let's go back and first try some of the ransomware. So let's start with Bad Rabbit and see what mayhem it's able to cause on the system. As you can see, within seconds, it is picked up by the engine. It says potential ransomware detected, gives us a score, and now it's deleted. Now let's try Loki, and it's the same result, very different scores, but it's still above the threshold, so it is considered as ransomware. Now we'll go ahead and try Ryuk, this was a major threat this year, again detected and blocked. Now we'll try Spora, keep in mind this is all happening based on some training, it's not using any kind of signatures. Now finally we'll go ahead and try WannaCry. Probably one of the most infamous ransomware variants ever. And as you can see, it's detected as well. Very high score on this one. So as you can tell, it works quite well with these ransomware variants. I have tested it with a lot more. So far, it's quite promising. Of course, there's a lot more development to be done. Too bad I'm so caught up these days. Otherwise, I might have had a lot more time to work on this. Now, let's go ahead and try some of the not ransomware samples. This is essentially a false positive test. So let's try Hitman Pro. As you can see, we have absolutely no trouble running it. Keep in mind, when I tested Sentinel-1, which is a next-gen AI-based engine, it did flag Hitman Pro. Now we'll go ahead and try Process Hacker. Oh, we already have it. Doesn't matter. Just dragged it in again. And as you can see, no problems launching it either. Putty. This is a network communication tool, again, often picked up by AI engines because it uses encryption. No problems, no problems with RedShot, TeamViewer, it's all good. So I hope this also gives you a bit of a background with regards to why I criticize engines when they pick up a lot of false positives. Again, it would be very easy for me to tweak this particular engine so that it would detect pretty much every ransomware out there if I didn't care about it also detecting, say, Process Hacker, because that's where it really gets tricky. In the future, I believe detection engines like this will be heavily reliant on the quality of data, which is why I believe companies are in a huge rush to build their data sets, because it's essentially like the new currency. Now, what can you expect from TPSC? So in the future, I do hope to be able to demo or release some kind of an engine like this. I'm not sure whether it's going to be open source due to the risks involved, but I'll see what I can do. Now, when I have a bit more resources, I might also try to develop this into a more integrated solution that can actually run on production systems. I also have plans in the future to make Malix accessible to you, the TPSC subscribers. It's obviously going to be very different from the current version that I'm using, and it'll likely be used to build some kind of threat intelligence. So yeah, exciting times lie ahead. I hope you all are having a great holiday season. I'm really curious to hear what you think in the comments. Let me know if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. 
maybe some videos following the development process for these projects. Check out the pcsecuritychannel.com if you haven't already. There's a lot of content on there. I'm also doing on-demand testing and some other services for vendors and enterprises now. So if you're interested, definitely drop me a line, reach out via email. There's details on the website. There's also a comprehensive list of clean sheets. Lots of goodies for you this December. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.